In this video of PTZ Grow Parametric Series, we're going to start our sheet metal part. And actually, this is our first video where I'm going to tell you how you can get started with PTZ Grow Parametric Sheet Metal part. Okay, so first thing what we're going to do here is, so let me click here on new. And then this time, instead of part solid, we need to select sheet metal. And in fact, we can also start solid. And let me show you how you can. And let's click OK. And again here, let's select it. And again, let me quickly, you know, do this extrude thing. For example, if you would like to uh, start from part and sometimes it is also possible that you wanted to work on sheet metal, but due to certain reason, you started with solid modeling. In that case, what we can do here is we can go to operation and then here we have option to convert part to sheet metal. So let's click on it. Now I'm going to select the surface and let's hit OK. And there we go. Here we can see it is now converted to sheet metal. And here you can see the commands we have are of sheet metal. Now let me actually go back and let's properly start sheet metal, which is let's click on new. And then from here, instead of choosing solid, we're going to select sheet metal. Now let's uncheck this and I'm going to go with this millimeter Newton second. And now we are again in sheet metal environment. Okay, so here in case of sheet metal, things are a little bit different. Like generally most of us start with extrude. Here generally people would like to start with planar. And for obvious reason, let's say you would like to create an enclosed area, then you use planar instead of extrude. And let me show you what does this mean. So let me actually create a rectangle here. Now I'm going to click OK. And here we go. Here you can see this area is not filled. And I was expecting extrude to behave like the way it behaves in solid modeling. But that's not the case. Here the extrude means like you are creating something hollow. Or even um, let me go back again to sketch mode. And let's say if I do not have these parts. Still you will be able to extrude the parts without any problem. And then you have created this kind of geometry. Now the thing is, let's say you do not want to create something like this. You want to create a planar wall. In that case, you can use this planar command or planar tool. Now again, I am selecting one sketching plane and similar kind of rectangle. And this time here, you're going to see planar actually behave like extrude behavior in solid modeling. But in case of sheet metal, if you want that kind of behavior, go with the planar or base wall. Now, after creating base wall, uh, probably what you're going to do is you're going to create a secondary wall that you can create using this flat tool. OK, so let's click here on flat. And now I'm going to select the edge here, which is the bottom edge. And there we go. So here you can see this is how you can create secondary wall or flat wall. Now, let's say you would like to create the similar kind of secondary wall against another edges. Well, you can do that with ease by simply pressing control button and then selecting the edges. And there we go. So here you can see it's not like you only can create one secondary wall, but multiple based on your requirement. OK, and actually it is making me a little bit confused. Yep. Now this is the direction. And let me again select the fourth one. So here you can see we have created all four walls. Well, you might be thinking of I have not defined any thickness. Well, um, when we were at planar um, here, we had option of defining thickness, which probably now we don't have because of we already have created this flat. So no worry, I'm going to take this divider up, which will suppress this flat feature. And now I can go edit definition and probably I now should be able to define. So let me click here on regenerate. So let me now click on dynamic edit and seems like we cannot. So this is the thing that, you know, one need to take care of that define thickness before you create. OK, so let me now delete this and I'm going to define the thickness first. So let's go again planar, choose the plane. Now define the thickness. Now plot your sketch and here you define the thickness. So let me define the thickness as 1.6 mm. And there we go. Now again, let's click on flat and I'm going to quickly select all these four edges.
and there we go and now here also the radius is assumed to be equivalent to thickness but if that's not the case you want to vary it then simply you can go here on the top and then here you can select either you would like to keep it at thickness level or you want to increase the radius to thickness by two or you would like to manually define the value of thickness let's say here in this case i have defined 5 mm so it is totally up to you how would you like to define the thickness okay so now let's me click on okay and in this way guys we have created this box using flat tool now let me click on delete and let me also show you one more capability of flat so let's say you know sometimes we do not need this plain flat wall like this we want further customization then in that case you can go here on the top and can select the flat surface and can select the wall based on your requirement you can go in any shape or you can even define it by yourself okay so i'm gonna go let's say trapezoid and now it's not like it always need to be 90 degree you can also play with that so again based on your requirement you can change the angle now let me click ok now let me talk about flange because a lot of many folks get confused between flat and flange so flange is nothing but uh, I would say is very helpful whenever you would like to define the end part. So here flange also have got different different shape. For example, you would like to keep it as an arc or as an S or as a flush. Okay, so all these options you have like how you would like to, you know, finish up the end profile of your sheet metal part. So generally flange is used for this particular purpose. And then um, here we can also, you know, drag this dynamic cursor and can further uh, tweak or customize it based on my requirement. Okay. This thing is also true in case of a uh, flat. So let me again go back and choose flat. And here also you can customize it like this. Now, let's say you have done all these changes, you know, you would like to unbend it. So you can use this option, which is unbend okay so when we click on unbend here we can see the preview of it now let me click okay this is sometime important if you want to calculate the blank length and in order to make it really close to the practical develop length what we can do here is we can go on the top on file and then prepare model properties and then here we should define some of value correctly for example the material which material i'm gonna use and one more thing i would like to show you which is y factor so y factor is nothing but the allowance sometime uh, some software have got this k factor so this is what we need to define so that we can meet our develop length more closely with actual develop length okay now let's say you have calculated the develop length now you would like to bend it back so what we can do here is you can use this option which is bend back okay and now here you can see the part is again bent back. Now there is one more thing that is very useful while developing any sheet metal part which is bend order. So let me click on bend and click on bend order. Now I'm going to define that this is my first bend. Then this is going to be my second bend. This is third and this is probably fourth. And after that I'm going to bend it from here. Okay. And this is the way you know we have created this bend order now let me also talk about certain bumps or profile you can create for that i'm gonna use this form tool so let's click here on sketched form and now i'm gonna sketch it here and let me use the center and yep let me keep it up and i'm gonna say rounded sharp shape and i'm gonna keep it as a thickness okay now let me click okay and there we go so here we have got this created and here we may probably add some radius let me add round here again equivalent to seat thickness that makes it more practical now let me go here on file and click on new and now i'm gonna click on drawing and let's me choose this option a4 where i'm gonna plot the drawing so let's start with general view and standard orientation now the second view i would like to place is top view and i'm gonna look for view state so here i don't see any state now one more thing i forgot to do is uh let me again go back here to part mode 
and now let's click here on view manager and here let's click on new view and you can give it a name for example develop blank or it's up to you okay i'm gonna say it develop blank and let's hit enter and now what here we can do is we can select on feature and i'm gonna exclude these features okay so what this will do is it will suppress these options and now if i click on done here you can see this is the unbent view that i want now here you can see this is my develop length and when i select master rep i am back again to my final look again if i click on develop length it is a flat view and again i have chosen master rep so now if i go back here on drawing and now let me add one more view that kind of you know be very helpful when i try to calculate or create develop length view again i'm gonna go back to view state and seems like that view is still not available here now let me again click on general and i'm gonna place a view like this now let's unlock the view moment and i would like to create a table here that is known as bend table and this bend table can be called by selecting the part going to show model annotation and there we go so here i can select this pan table and also some of these dimensions that i think will be worth it this particular view okay now i'm gonna click ok and there we go we have added this bend table here which kind of shows number of bend and then the direction of bend as well and then further we can see inside bend radius and bend length so this was kind of our first tutorial and overview of PTC Creo Sheet Metal which is I would say an optimized environment to design and develop sheet metal parts. And that's all guys from my side in this video. I hope that you find this video helpful and informational. If so then please do like and subscribe to Engineering Pritam to follow more such engineering topics and I will catch you soon with one such another video. Till then you take care and bye bye.